Let's face it, the market for plugins is kind of oversaturated. There are so many out there and new ones releasing every month, so how do you stand out in this cramped and overcrowded space? Well, Jens Bogren might have the best solution, and that is to make a plugin that not only sounds phenomenal, but saves you a ton of your time. If you don't know who Jens is, you have undoubtedly heard his work from bands like At The Gates, Between The Buried And Me, Amon Amarth, Flesh God Apocalypse, and something I'm personally really looking forward to, the new Revocation album. If you are new here, my name is Taylor and I make guitar videos for metalhead dorks and I make a point to try and write and record, mix and master a new demo song pretty much in every video. This is incredibly time consuming, especially when it comes to the mixing portion. So the idea of plugins that are already dialed in and all you have to do is set the amount of gain you want and the level is super appealing to me, especially when it comes to my least favorite instrument to dial in, the bass. Luckily, Bogren Digital has released a new plugin for bass that has two settings and a gain knob. That's it, and it sounds killer. Now don't get me wrong, it can be a lot of fun deep diving down those tone questing rabbit holes, but when you are just trying to get something done, it's more of an obstacle than anything. So today I'm going to show you a mix I made with not only the bass knob plugin, but the amp knob plugin as well, and some of the Bogren digital IRs and drum samples. Then afterwards, I'll show you the session and we can talk more about these plugins and how I'm using them. All right, let's get to it. Hi, I'm back. So I have that track opened up here in Reaper. Let's dive in and I will show you how I am using the Bogren amp sims, the IRs, and also the drum samples. First things first, we're gonna open up the bass here. Uh, this is the bass. Pretty chunky. Now you can see here that I have a bass high and a bass low track. I will get into that in just a minute. Uh, for right now, we're just gonna solo one of these tracks, open up the effects. We're gonna bypass the EQ I have on it and open up the bass knob, which is the new bass amp sim from Bogren. Uh, I really like these one knob amp sims. I like not having to dial in a bunch of stuff, especially with bass. For whatever reason, I just really don't like dialing in bass. So this is perfect for me. Uh, it looks really nice here. Let's go ahead and listen to the bass. That's what it sounds like where I have it set right now. Um, and there's only really two controls. You have clean and dirt, and then you can adjust the gain. We'll go into some of these other little settings here in a second, but uh, let's just listen back now. So you can hear in between just the clean and the dirt and with the gain knob, you can get a wide variety of different bass sounds. Um, I really like the high end on my bass to be really like, you know what I mean? Just really aggressive. So we're gonna leave that. Now let's look at some of these other settings. If I was using this with a bass, you know, if I was playing bass right now, there is a tuner built into it. So that's excellent. And this does work in standalone mode. So you can use this to monitor your bass and every plugin that operates in standalone mode should have a tuner in my opinion. It is such a valuable tool. 
You can turn the cab on and off here. There's no way to load IRs in the plugin, but uh, I will show you how to do that with a free plugin here in just a second. And then we have the settings here, your license info. Uh, you do have a built-in gate and uh, you can make the input mono or stereo. I'm only using a mono input, so it's set to mono. Uh, you turn the gate on or off and set the threshold. Dead simple, dead easy to use will save you a bunch of time, guaranteed. Sponsorships aside, I guarantee you this is going to be my go-to bass plugin just because of how easy it is to load up and dial in. Now, just real quick, I'm not gonna go too deep on this, but the way that I have the bass set up, I'm using uh, Nova, which is a free EQ plugin. I am high passing the bass high track. And if we go in here into the bass low track, I am low passing that one and I have a little bit of compression going on here at about 80 hertz. Like I said, I'm not gonna dive into this too much, but the main reason that I split that is so that I can balance the top end and the low end of the bass and just kind of get a little bit more control over the bass tone and how it blends in with the drums. One thing that's a little bit different though is the bass knob that I have on the low bass track. Let me just solo this here for you. Uh, I actually have set to the clean setting. I just felt like the bass response in the low end was a little bit better on the clean setting, so that's why I have it set that way, but you can see that I have the gain dimed on the clean setting, so it's not really clean, clean. You know what I mean? Okay, let's listen back to just the bass. That bass will give you nightmares. Let's look at one of the guitar tracks here. Both guitars have the same plugins going on. Again, just a really, really awesome plugin, especially if you don't like dialing a whole bunch of stuff. You know, it makes it dead simple for you to use. All you have here is an on off switch and the gain knob. We do have the tuner. Uh, we have the cab, which is bypassed. I will go into that in just a second. And then we have the same settings here with the gate and the input options. It's just very, very simple, very easy to use. Let's listen to just the guitar. Again, super, super easy to use, a big time saver, and the tones sound excellent as you would expect them to. Now, one thing that I do have different is I do have the cab bypassed here. I'm using Pulse to load my impulse responses. Uh, this is a free plugin, and I am using the Rhythm Downtuned IR pack. It's set to the Happy to See Men. See Men? It's using the Happy to See Men IR. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about all of the samples and the IRs is they're not named after the gear or microphones that they are using, which I think is really good because it forces you to use your ears and not your eyes when you're doing this mixing, which is really, really important. And I actually found myself going through this list and critically listening to all the IRs and not just going through and choosing the uh, Mesa rectifier cabinet. So uh, let's listen to a few different IRs real quick. I actually like a lot of them. I think they all sound really, really good, but uh, I found that that happy to see men IR just kind of worked in this case. So that's what we have going on with the guitars. Let's load up the drums. The drums are gonna be fun to explain. Okay, I use a drum VST called Perfect Drums, but this will work with any drum program that allows you to use your own samples. And the way that this works here is you have the actual drum set right here. You pick your different drums, your different cymbals, whatever. Uh, then you go into your sampler and you can load up your different samples. These are the Bogren drum samples. And what you do is you select the sampler you wanna use and you select the layer you wanna load. Uh, so let's say we want to load the hard layer of our kick drum here. Uh, you would go to import all, go to the folder with your drum samples. Uh, we would pick kick here. And in each one of these folders, you have your samples. You have the option of individual hits or you know mixed hits that are more mix ready. I prefer the mixed hits here. Um, so let's listen to Roundhouse. Then we have Ball Slap. And you can just go through and pick whatever samples you like. I think I actually ended up liking this Cheek Slap. 
I like that one, it sounds pretty nasty. And then since we're selecting the hard dynamic layer here, we're gonna wanna select all these that say uh, velocity one. If you listen, the ones that say velocity three here in the file name sound a little bit softer. So we're gonna wanna go through and select all the velocity ones for the hard layer. And then we're gonna go through and do that for each velocity layer. So if I go down here to like soft, for example, we're gonna go import all and we're gonna find all of the ones with velocity three that are the same slap blend. Open those up. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the snare and the toms. Uh, it's gonna to take a little bit here to do that, but once we're done, we should have something really cool. So now that we have the kick, the snare, and the tom samples loaded up into Perfect Drums, I wanna go through and do something here in the mixer. I don't wanna layer those drums with the samples from Perfect Drums, but I still wanna have snare and toms in the overhead and the room mics and the reverb mics in Perfect Drums. So I need to leave those drums active. I can't just go and mute them, but what you can do is you can go in here to the mixer and you can turn the direct all the way down. And what that's gonna do is take away the direct drum sample sound and we will be using the Bogren signature drum samples for that, but we will still have snare and toms in our overheads and our room mics and stuff like that. Let's listen to what the drums sound like now. Sounds pretty awesome. All right, now let's listen to the whole thing all together. All right, if you like this video, you know what to do. I have a Patreon and other cool stuff down in the description, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.